Hello, my beautiful friends. Welcome back to the show. Today, I'm super excited to dive into today's conversation with Melissa Miller. Melissa is a children and family photographer whose work is often described as magical. She began her photography career more than 20 years ago through journalism and returned to her camera after eight years as an elementary school teacher. She loves children and has a lifetime of experience working and playing with them. She continues to teach at child focused photography retreats and she also produces commercial children's lifestyle work for companies like Gerber Children's Wear. She lives in Western Washington with her husband, two daughters, and Golden Retriever. Without further ado, here is Melissa. Welcome. Hi. Thanks, Lisa. Happy so, to be here. Awesome. So tell us who you are and what you're passionate about. Um, I'm Melissa. I am a photographer, a mom. Um, I'm passionate about children and the arts. So photography, but not just photography, writing, art, painting, drama. I love it all. Love it. So you specialize in specifically children led fun, playful sessions. So I love the idea of a child and baby led session. So can you maybe tell more about your approach with these sessions? Yeah. Um, my, I think my basic philosophy is that children are wired for play. So I just try to incorporate play as much as possible throughout the session and try to get to know the child. Um, with a pre-session questionnaire and then incorporate their interests into that play during the session as much as possible. I love that. So when it comes to a pre-session questionnaire and asking about the, the, the child, are there specific questions that photographers should be asking to get the, like the real juicy, good details? Yeah. I mean, I think, I don't know that there's like right or wrong questions, but ones that have been really helpful for me are, um, what are things that make your child genuinely happy? Mm. And I, I list specifically like songs, characters, sports, shows, anything, basically any information you can get about the child and what they're into and what they love and what gets them excited. I think that's probably the most valuable information from a questionnaire. I love, are you ever surprised with the answers? Yeah. Often. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's really specific things like he loves the song going on a bear hunt. Oh. Um, that I would have never thought of using. Yeah. Um, and, and there's a lot of like Peppa Pig, Spider-Man, yeah. soccer, you know, some of the things that are more common, but sometimes it's very specific little tidbits that are super yeah. helpful. I love that. So it's rare, but I'm sure some photographers maybe don't like kids. So what advice would you have for those that don't naturally connect with children? I think that there are probably two approaches if you don't like kids. Um, number one, don't photograph kids. <laughs> totally. I, I mean, really, if, if you really genuinely right? dislike yeah. children, like kids don't... need to be around people that lift them up and love them. Yes. And there's lots of other things and people that you can photograph besides kids. Yeah. You can photograph dogs or weddings or, you know, lots of other things. Um, and number two, which I think is the better option is get to know them. I think yeah. that, I think that when we know someone, we love them. So take the time to learn a little bit about them and to play with them and come to their level and then maybe you'll like kids. Love that. This year I'm on a bit of a business uh, sabbatical from my photography business, but I, um, it had been about three or four months that I hadn't actually photographed anyone beyond my family or myself. And so I did a model call. Well, it wasn't really a model call. I messaged one of my favorite clients who messaged two of her friends and I ended up with nine children all at once. And we a lot had <laughs> a blast. Like I dressed them up in old fashioned outfits. We spent about three hours together just playing and just doing all these fun things. And, oh God, my, you know, it's so funny. Cause I was like, I don't know if I'm, I love kids, but I realized I was like, I miss kids so much. Mm -hmm. I'm a child portrait photographer. That's who I am. Right. Yes. Right. And I love that you said it's just playing. I mean, that's really what yeah. it like. I feel like that's what a photo session should be. It should feel like playtime to yeah. the children. Yeah. It was so fun. And just playing dress up like and letting them, giving them that choice of like, what would you like to wear and what prop would mm -hmm. you like to hold? Mm -hmm. And what would you like to do? What do you think you would do in this? Like, and just asking them those questions and getting them involved in it was so fun. And it was just a different approach than I I'd had done previously. But I think also having so many children at once, I couldn't second guess myself. So it was just like, I'm focused on you. We're going to play for like five minutes and then like, let's go, let's go see what happens. Yeah. I love that. I think incorporating choice is brilliant. It's so fun. So 
Uh, what advice do you have for maybe tough sessions when no matter what you do, that little one is just miserable, they're screaming, they're crying, they, and they just don't want to even engage with any of the family? Mm -hmm. um, I don't, first of all, I don't think I've ever seen it like that yeah. extreme of a situation. Um, but I think the most important thing that you can do is work with the energy of the child. So yeah. if they're like curled up against mom's chest, yeah. photograph them curled up against mom's chest. That's real, you know? Yeah. And, and most likely if a child is reacting that way, that is part of their personality that the parents are well aware of Yeah. and maybe even will want to capture and remember in the future. Yeah. So, um, I found that when I do that though, the children gradually unfold and bloom in their yeah. own time. So by the end of the session is when I can interact directly with them and play with them and get individual portraits. Whereas at the beginning, it might just be a lot of curled up against mom. Yeah, fair enough. I remember this one session and I I got to the field and it was clear like dad actually never ended up showing for this session. So mom and dad had gotten a fight previously. And so you could tell that there were like was a That's lot hard. going on in this family. And then we got to the session site and the daughter just lost it. Just complete meltdown. It started raining. It was windy. And I just got to that point where I was like, um, I think we're just going to call it today, guys. Like mm -hmm. we're going to regroup. And I think like a lot of the time there's a feeling of maybe embarrassment or shame that photographers get when things that are maybe sometimes beyond their control, but they have to reschedule that time. And they're like, Oh, I guess, do I charge the, the client twice for that? Or what, what, like, I'm like, no, like just sometimes it is what it is. And that's mm -hmm. sort of what we are signing up for. Sometimes you just can't control what happens with the weather or children or animals or bees or babies. You know, it just is what it is. Um, mm -hmm. What advice do you have for that? Like if you run in, if a photographer is running into situations like that. I think what you said is, is perfect that, I mean, we do what we can, like we can do what we can do and that's all we can do. You know, all yeah. we can give is our best and yeah. just having that flexibility. Like you said, sometimes just calling it and yeah. regrouping and coming back. I think that's wise. Yeah. I think also like for me, what I had to realize early, well, actually I'm a late, I have to learn the lesson like five times before I actually learn it is don't overbook your calendar. If mm -hmm. you like for weather or like these situations, especially when you're working with these like toddlers and mid range kids at, in weather fall family Absolutely. sessions, right? Like, yes, I remember Absolutely. one year, oh gosh, we got smoke. Um, from wildfires and then we got like rain and it was like it just went from one extreme to the other and I was like what am I gonna do I have like 40 sessions I have to shoot this oh, is gosh. insane this is insane <laughs> yeah I live in western Washington so like Seattle area yeah. and yeah I mean during most of the year I don't book more than one session a week yeah because there might only there might not even be one nice day that yeah. week so yeah I think if having that degree of flexibility is super helpful. Yeah. And I think, well, obviously you'd have to price yourself accordingly, right? Like if you're only charging a hundred dollars yeah. a session, like really what's the point? Um, but when you're shooting one, you know, one a week, you've got to make sure that you can sustain that too. For Definitely. Sure. Yeah. Let me see. So what advice would you have for maybe working with those shy or the res reserved or maybe those sensitive, sensory sensitive children, um, or one, ones that maybe are, less extroverted in their play. Mm -hmm. Um, I have two thoughts on that. I think the first one is going back to what I said earlier about the questionnaire, you know, yeah. it's really helpful if you can know that mm -hmm. beforehand so yeah. that you approach them gently. Yeah. Um, I try to take a couple of minutes at the very, very beginning of a session to just talk with the child, maybe show them my camera. Um, if I remember something from the questionnaire, yeah. maybe bring that up try to build common ground. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is just meet them wherever they are. Yeah. And if, if they're kind of a shy, shy, withdrawn child, don't have them do boisterous activities. Mm -hmm. Um, just, just work with their energy. Yeah. Love that. So something that I've really been struggling with recently is that my own little muse is 14. And he doesn't want to be photographed anymore. And he doesn't want to have his images put oh. on social media. And I'm trying not to let it eat away at me. Um, 
<laughs> and I honestly, I just, through this phase, it's made me want to really pick up my camera less because he was my original reason yeah. of becoming yeah. a photographer. Um, and I really think this is a common struggle for a lot of photographers as our children just sort of get older. So do you find that maybe your children's willingness has changed a little bit and how are you navigating that? Uh, first of all, I, my children are pretty young. So okay. my oldest is going to be five. Oh um, gosh. I wish so I she's just girl. entering kindergarten. <laughs> oh. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting that you ask this because she has always loved being photographed. I've yeah. always heard about photographers mm -hmm. ch child syndrome. So yeah. I've really tried to make them, I think that's really what got me more intensely into the play-based sessions was yeah. wanting my child not to stop lo loving photography. Yeah. Um, but this year we, I, we had a, a series of days where it was just unexpected, gorgeous weather. It was like in May, the end of May, um, which in Washington, it's still pretty rainy then usually. And I found this incredible daisy field and the lupines were in bloom and they only last a little while. And we were going out of town the next week and I was doing some location scouting and bringing her and I ended up doing three nights back to back, um, with her three golden hour sessions oh, with her. Wow. And I would usually bring another child. And so it was just kind of playing and um, scouting out locations, but I've never done, usually I only do like one a month, you yeah. know, with her. And she had a great time the first night. She had a great time the second night. She had a good time the third night until the end. And, you know, keep in mind that golden hour here is like, you know, nine thirty PM sunsets yeah. and her bedtime is seven usually. So anyway, long story long by the third night, she she was done. She had an epic meltdown in the parking lot and she was just, she was just overtired and she hasn't yeah. wanted to do pictures since then. And, and I don't think it's permanent or anything. And no. I just haven't pushed it. I'm actually, I just signed, I'm just signing a contract with Carter's to do some work with them. And I have the opportunity to photograph my own children if they want to be involved. And she said, you know, I don't think I want to do it. And yeah. I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. I'm going to use other models. Yeah. Um, but it was just a good reminder to me that like, just to not overdo it, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure with a 14 year old boy, it's a totally different ball game. It started really when he was eight and like he, he was like, he was so into it. We had so much fun. We go on adventures and mm -hmm. like, it was just photographing him, like engaging with nature. Or, like it was so fun. And then it was, I think, when he started to have more of an awareness of the social media and he was like, I don't want to be online, I think, mom. And I'm like, okay, buddy, like if I'm going to put an on image online just to show like our personal family, I need your permission. Okay. So I'm always going to ask you if it's okay. I love that. Right. Yeah. Because then he's in control. And, mm -hmm. um, and we, like, we've done a few shoots over the years and, and even now, like he'll, he's like, mom, he's like, okay, so mom, so if I do a um, maybe a shoot with you, can I get some like money for my V bucks for my video games? <laughs> he knows how this works. Right? Negotiation. And I'm like, I will do whatever you want for a photo of you. Anything. <laughs> Anything. Right. So it's just funny. And it's just, I think like the older they get is just realizing like, just learning to respect, like, like I would want to be treated with respect. He gets the same respect. Mm -hmm. And I think just, and that wasn't, it was like, it's so fascinating to me of like my viewpoint of putting my child on social media has changed versus like when he was little, like I never even had a second thought about what his thought would be about it in the future. And now I'm right. like, interesting, like this is something that I'm thinking about now, but I never would have mm -hmm. thought about it back then. Yeah. Right? I think, yeah, it's, I mean, I'm so grateful that social media didn't exist when I was a little kid, Right. you know, like the picture of me stuck in a chair. I hated that picture. I found it and I destroyed it, <laughs> which I, I regret now, but like, I, know, right? um, I was so embarrassed about that. And, yeah. and now we have all of these pictures of our children all over the internet. You know, it is, it is a little scary to think about. Yeah. Like I have I pictures, a lot of my pictures mom... of the back of my daughter's head, like <gasps> lots of them. <laughs> yeah. I have pictures of me, like I have three strapped to the toilet because the only time way I would go to the bathroom is if my parents put a, like a car seat with a belt 
like a seatbelt or one and just put me on the toilet. Like that would have been all over social media. Oh yeah. That would have been a big hit. <laughs> and I was sleeping. I would, I'd fallen asleep. Like the picture is hilarious. Uh, but like, it's crazy. Like we, and we don't even think about it. We just like, and we've been doing it for years mm -hmm. and I'm just like, whoa, interesting. Cause we're just like the first generation really of moms right. to have we're kind of like making this, the way, right? Yeah. It's fascinating. Really. That was like a super tangent I went on. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. I, I just, I love the way that you're honoring your son's wishes with that. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I hope that he'll get he'll excited about something. He'll yeah. come Does he ever like come up with ideas for shoots? Um, he, he loves his dirt bike and we, what we've done is we've made videos. And so I make mm -hmm. him music videos of him like riding around on the dirt bike or, um, or the ATV and like, we put it to like some rock music or something that he likes or some rap or something. And it's hilarious mm -hmm. and, but he loves it. And so I, I, I get the creative joy of playing with him and, mm -hmm. um, and making something and, and spending time together really. So it's not very often, but when he does say it, I jump on it. And you probably try to play really cool, like, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I guess we oh, yeah. can do that. If I you guess want. so, if you want, right? Sure. If you want, right? <laughs> so funny. Oh, 14. <laughs> I love it. So are you ready for our lightning round? Yes. Okay. So Let's do you have any personal projects going on right now? And if so, what is it? Um, not really. My personal project is unpacking lots of boxes <laughs> right, in my house. Moved. We just moved. Yes. <laughs> I love that. No time for personal fun. <laughs> right. What three things do you want to be remembered for? Hmm. Um, love, joy, um, love and joy and light. Love, yeah. joy, and light. Yeah. Love that. If you like to cook, what do you like to cook the most? I love making soups Ooh, same. and granola. Mm -hmm. Those are probably my favorites. Yeah. Okay. Favorite soup. Um, I don't know. They're different every time. Like yeah. I love like creamy chicken soups or Thai inspired soups. Yeah. I made a What's your favorite soup? mulligatani, hands down mulligatani. It's like, I don't even know what that is. <gasps> I'm going to have to Google that. Oh my gosh. It's like this curry chicken rice. And I throw some coconut milk in it. Yeah. Yes. I love so that good. too. Yeah. Yeah. I just love it. Like Tony. <laughs> yeah. What did you want to be when you grew up as a kid? Um, I wanted to be a teacher and a mom and a writer and an mm -hmm. artist. Love that. Go to song that lifts you up when you're down. Uh, okay. The one that popped into my head is Axel eight, which yeah. I, like, I don't know why I thought of that, but it like gets me energized. It's I love one. it. I love it. For me, it's the final countdown. Yes. <laughs> Rock kid of the eighties, man. That's right. <laughs> Favorite guilty or not so guilty pleasure. Mm, chocolate. Mm, good one. Chocolate, What's... Specifically Tillamook chocolate peanut butter ice cream. Ooh. It's really good. Yum. Best gift you've ever received. Oh, um, well, this is fitting. My husband got me a camera. Oh. I had been out of photography for years and years and had no intention of going back because I get a little too obsessed with it. And it's yeah. like hard to enjoy a hike without getting distracted by the light or enjoy a gathering without thinking about shot angles. And so I wasn't going to get one. This isn't, I'm not going very lightning speed, am I? Anyway, <laughs> the long story is my husband got me a camera after I told him not to. And I'm so glad he did. I love that. Um, what is something you've accomplished as an adult, your younger self would be proud of? Um, a couple of, a few years ago, we actually lost a baby. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it, and it was a really, uh, a really hard situation, but I think that my younger self would be proud of my resilience yeah. and just the way that we kind of, we chose to find joy through and afterward. And we've been able to create a beautiful little life for our family in spite of something really hard. I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. 
What are you most grateful for in this season of life? My daughters. Yeah. I have an almost five-year-old and a 17-month-old, and they are just joy and light yes. and goodness. 17-month-year-old is the best age. So fun. And so fun. Right. Try to unpack boxes with a 17-month-old. Yeah. Oh, it's a kick. Boy. Is, she, is she chatting yet? A little bit. A little it's bit. mostly squawking and yeah. breaching. Yeah. My son would be a little bit every, of every, Everything was like that, 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 that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I love it. What mm -hmm. has been the best piece of business advice you've been ever, ever have been given? Um, I think just the principle of under promise over deliver. Mm. Um, I learned about it early on far before having a business. And then I've also heard Deanne Bull talk about it. I know she was on your show recently. Mm -hmm. She's great. Anything that she says is great business advice. Um, but I think that's my favorite, just yeah. over deliver. Love that. What do you wish more photographers knew? Um, you are enough and mm. just do what you love. Like really just do what you love yeah. and, and the people that love that too will find you. Mm, yeah. I love that. What advice do you have for someone who's just starting out? Do what you love. Do what you love. I mean, I again, but yeah. really, I think that's the best, like yeah. find what really interests you and, and, and just trust that you're interested in that for a reason and yeah. follow it and let the people come. Mm -hmm. Love that. Where can our listeners learn more from you? I am on Instagram, Melissa Miller Photos. I have an education group on Facebook called awesome. That Beautiful Childhood. Um, and I have an online course through Click Photo School, 101 Ways to Play. I'd say that those are probably the main ways. Awesome. So I'd love to end my interviews just with this last question. And it is, what are you currently curious about or artistically curious about? I am curious about, this is kind of random and specific, but I'm, I'm interested in experimenting with off camera flash mm. backlight sun streams. Like, yeah. you know, when the sun streams through the trees, Yes. I want to figure out how to create that artificially because I think it's so beautiful. So, right. And if with a fog machine. Yes. So that'd cool. be amazing. Right. I just, I bought one like four years ago and forgot about it and found it in my prop room. And I was like, and I've pulled it out recently and I haven't done that with like the streams of light yet, but you just like made my brain go like, Ooh, yes, please like do it, do it and show yes. me. And that'd be yes. so pretty. <laughs> right? Like with little girls twirling, <gasps> twirling. In, backlight, yes. in a warehouse, maybe. Mm, I love it. I love it. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. This has been so fun. I love it. Oh, my beautiful friends. I hope you have enjoyed this conversation just as much as I have. I am sending you so much of my light and my love today and every single day. We will see you next time.